Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, at first, I have uh, to say that I have to go to vote because, <laughs> unfortunately, in Germany we cannot vote uh, digital in a digital way. Uh, we have to we have to bring our cards in a box very manually, and then <laughs> and we have three votes, and if we have three times go to the box, took the card. Um, and put the card in, and so it's not not typical for digital donation, um, and so it takes uh, <laughs> a many, uh, many time, and so we have to vote on, um, not later than um, half past eleven. So it make, I make it very short, uh, but maybe I can come back and I can join 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 your session. Um, Yes, I think we live in very very special times. You know, I think. Nobody could imagine, um, not even the intelligence services, um, that we could have a, a hot war in Europe. And uh, during the time when we wake up in the morning, we look what how's the weather, uh, we look Facebook or whatever you look, and close to us in the Europe, the people wake up in the morning. And the first check is, are my relatives still alive? Are my cousins still alive? Is my mother still alive? And if you see how brutal this war is, um, our grandparents um, think, remember on their baddest day, and now we live in these war times um, in Europe. And after this human-made miracle of uh, bringing freedom to Berlin, to bringing freedom uh, to Germany, bringing freedom for all people in Eastern Germany, I, I grew up, and not really grew up, but I'm getting older, uh, so uh, the people who grew up in Eastern Germany, like me, um, if, for example, I have three daughters, and they asked me, if, Dad, when you were in my age, um, do you also spend your holidays in France or Spain or Italy or Israel? And I said, no, when I wasn't your age, um, the trip had to stop one hour, we, we left at home, because then there was a border. There was no chance to go uh, far away. And now we live in freedom, and, and you, if, you, if you see Berlin here, this river was the border. So this uh, part um, between the Reichstag, uh, uh, between the Reichstag and this side, there was the wall. And this side here is the this is the is, is the is the is the western side, and this is the eastern side. And now we have a bridge. It's a very this is a let me say a symbol here. This bridge here, you see. This is not only a bridge for Germany, this is the, the symbol for freedom, because if you walk from this bridge, you walk from former GDR uh, to Western Germany, and now we, we, are, we, are, we are reunified, and now everything is free. And if you were here 30 years ago, there was nothing than grass, there was only wood there. Here. And now uh, you have uh, this uh, this amazing government uh, department here every, everywhere. So now you can you cannot see uh, where we're freedom and unfreedom. But uh, we it, it, for me it's it's a, some, every time very special if I when, when I walk over this uh, this this, uh, this bridge because um, it were our parents and grandparents fighting for freedom. They stand up for freedom and and. We see that freedom is not. Uh, we, we know that freedom is not um, something we take we take for guaranteed. Take for guaranteed. And how came it to this to this special situation? After I think we are in a completely new world. After the first World War, World War One, we had a special situation. Uh, something like a multi polar world. And in this world, um, you have the, the right of the, of the strongest. You have big empires like Great Britain, uh, Portugal, uh, Netherlands, um, Spain, Germany. And, so, and, and these empires fight together. 
And then we struggled in a way um, to a world war. Nobody could imagine that um, it happened. Because I think, you, you, maybe you have the, the book from Jerry uh, from, from Clark, um, and, he's, and he said, nobody, nobody at this time, and th those time, wants this war. But silly decisions, after one decision after other decision, and three, four weeks later, the whole Europe was at war. And, and we have to learn from this session, that, that we had, and, and, we have, and we learned much from this time. Then, we, there were the, 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 the saddest, uh, the, the, the saddest uh, point of the society, the Holocaust, uh, where people killed over six million the, the fabric way uh, Jewish people. I think the deepest point on, uh, on, on, on the world. And then we split the world after a multipolar world in a bipolar world. From a multipolar world to a bipolar world. And the bipolar world was the communist system against the Western uh, capitalistic system. Now we know that only you can, you can only be free in a capitalistic system, definitely. Um, and you see what a capitalistic system brings, wealth, freedom, and so on. And everything you see here is the reason because people can do it by their own and not state organized. And after this bipolar world, we had a, a cold war, not a, whole, not, not a hot war, we had a cold war because it was balanced. The, the, um, we had a balanced, um, we had a balanced world order, and then after, and this is the special moment. I come to this uh, to this topic um, with Perestroika, Glasnost. Uh, people in Eastern Europe or Middle Europe. Now we say Middle Europe. Uh, stand up for freedom. Stand up by freedom, and. Mikhail Gorbachev said, okay, we want to open the Soviet Union. And then the war uh, breaks down. Nobody could imagine three weeks before that that could happen. Uh, I think my parents, for example, ordered an old GDR car. If they would know that uh, only three or four weeks before the war comes down, if they would know that uh, four weeks later we can buy a uh, Western Germany Mercedes, we would never buy this old stuff. But nobody could imagine. And then the war, and then the, then the war was done. And, uh, and I'm not a grandparent, I'm not an old guy. So even our young generation uh, knows what it means to be in a world of unfreedom. And now we live in a freedom world. And then, after this, we thought uh, the bipolar world crashed down. And then we thought uh, the freedom of the world is, is there. No war more. Uh, somebody has, uh, talked about uh, the, the, end, the, the end of the history. Um, and now we know it's not the end of the history. Germany, France, a lot of European countries um, debudget their um, forces, Navy, uh, Air Force, because they thought we do need it. Why? Well, it's freedom. <laughs> For a bipolar world, now we have a multilateral world. We thought we have the UN, the, 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 the UN and we can everything do together. We can deal everything together, we speak, we can vote, and then if we sit uh, in regularly together, then we can solve all our problems on the table. This was, this was the idea of the, nine, of the 90s, that we can uh, solve the problems, all challenges on the table. Then we have to use Levin war, very bad, Europe, very, very bad. Um, and then, we begin that some countries um, left this multilateral consensus. They used the multilateral um, system only for their own profit, but not for the profit at all. You see China, how China uh, influence the UN how Russia influenced the UN, 
in a very, very uh, special way. And so they used the, the multilateral system for their own authoritarian systems. And if it comes, for example, to anti-Semitism, uh, then you see how some crazy countries uh, use the UN for um, providing their bullshit, for example. And we have no, mater we have no maturity <laughs> as a democratic world. So, and it's the issue. And then, after that, we come from a bilateral world to a multilateral world. And now, I think, we are in the middle of a new multipolar world, like before uh, World War I. Because now we see uh, Germany, France, Russia, China, the US, and so F, all these countries. And we see that some countries think that the right of the, of the, of the strongest is the way how to deal. You see it with Russia, the hot war. It's not like the period of bipolar world, a cold war. Now we have a hot war. We see what China is dealing with Taiwan, for example. Um, it's the next conflict, and it would be the much bigger conflict in this region, the South China, Sub China Sea. And, and I think from this crazy multipolar world, we have everybody have to rethink about what it means if we, if we handle in a way like the politi politicians before World War I. And the biggest challenge now is that we, can, that we do not step in a World War III. Because the kitchen is prepared, therefore. We have every, every ingredient for this. Multipolar world, big powers, and so we have to be very, very careful not to step in. And now, and this is the, the next future, but what will come? I think we see this, this same parallel like um, um, before. We, and now I think we come from a multipolar world in a bipolar world again. But not a bipolar world between a communist system and Western capitalistic system. I think we 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 on the ground step, on the big step from to for the bipolar world, from democratic systems and out out of autocratic 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 systems. So, and this is the new bipolar world we step in the next in the, in the next times. That Germany, Europe, the U.S., Israel, Australia, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan are together, and uh, think much more about how we deal with dictatorships in the world. And uh, and this is and we come to a new bipolar bipolar world. But uh, what it means to be a uh, diplomat uh, is that we also have to deal with countries that are not a democratic country like we. Um, but this is the this is the uh, this is the new normal, I think, that we have to that we have to accept uh, that that we have to accept um, that we come uh, in the new bipolar world, and uh, and after that, I think. We have everything to do that other people in the world can live in the same freedom way like, like we. And if you look to Iran, for example, like now th thousands of women and people stand up for freedom and we should support them every second uh, because uh, we know what freedom, what freedom makes with people and I wish every people in the world uh, that they have the same advantages like we all together. Uh, to live in a in a freedom way, and here in Germany, we are, we built the freedom with uh, draw down the wall directly. This river was the, was was the border, and also with the Abraham Accords between Arab countries and Israel. Here in Germany was the not in DC. In DC was the first speeches, but in the, here in Berlin um, was the first official meeting between the ambassador, uh, the, the foreign minister for foreign affairs from Israel, from Morocco, and from uh, United Arab Arabic States. Here on the Holocaust Denkmal was this first official meeting. So I think Berlin is the heart of freedom, 
and I hope also for the, uh, for the, the heart of future. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for your keynote address and the words of optimism. Uh, hopefully, uh, it goes in that direction. Do you have a few moments to take one or two questions? Um, or? No, I have to. I have to leave right now. I hear the siren in the background. Yes. Uh. Yes, I have to. What? Okay. Yes, I have. Yes. Okay. So we can take one or yes, two. Yes. Or? Yes. Yes. I Wonderful. Have. All right. So let's take advantage of the opportunity. Please, Please don't be shy. Questions, comments. If you could just raise your hand and okay, sure. And briefly introduce yourself, as always. Hi, good morning, um, your, uh, your Honor. Um, I'm Cyril from the Philippines. I just have a, one question. Um, you um, were able to describe to us um, the difference, um, in the reactions um, on, after the fall of the wall. It was very positive. People were thinking, um, scholars were, were, um, were saying that it's the end of the history, and there's all, all this positivity uh, in terms of a new world order coming into place. And now we see that um, 33 years after the fall of the wall, um, things are not as we expected. So my question would be, what lessons can we learn from these misassumptions that we did in, in the past uh, and um, discovering that this is happening now in, in our present? Um, if if we are able, able to overcome this, this current dilemma that we have, um, how should we look into the lessons that we are learning from this scenario? I think the miracle in this time was that it was um, human-made. It was made by the people. It was made by people fight for their own freedom. I think this is the most important thing. There was no other country and said, you have to be free, now I come and give you freedom. So the people by their own said, uh, we, have, we want to live in a freedom, in, in a, in a, in, in, we want to live in freedom, we want to vote, uh, we, want to, we want to discuss, we want to uh, uh, be, um, have an open society and so on. And I think the first, the first um, demonstrations in this time I no parents of my friends they want on, on this demonstration. I think they not want to be part of uh, uh, Western Germany. They only want to reform their own system. This was the first demonstration. They go on the street to reform the system, uh, to have free, free free votes and so. And then was his then was history because Gorbachev said, okay, we want to <laughs> we want us to do the same thing in, in, the, in the Soviet Union, and and then everything comes together. So, and of course, um, yes, and so and what we can learn is that we should support people who stand up for freedom. I'm pretty sure if um, ten years ago, 1983. 1984, where the GDR was completely um, bankrupt. Western Germany gave them a billion of credits to survive. Uh, because in Western Germany, the new generation in Western Germany didn't want the reunification. Uh, and so they give credits that the old system survive. And if we have learnings from this, I would say we have to. We have. We, we shouldn't give money to to authoritarian systems to survive. We should stay on the side of the people standing, fighting for freedom. And the GDR would broken much earlier than 1989. And so now it's in the same way. We shouldn't exactly in this way. We should not stay on JCPOA, the the, the nuclear uh, negotiation agreement uh, in with Iran, because you cannot negotiate with a partner on the one hand side, to, um, to have less sanction with the Iran mullahs, and on the other hand side, they killed women on the street. So this is, the work does not work. And this is a learning, that you ha we have to quit, for example, JCPOA, that we have to do much more pressure, um, not uh, the pressure, 
not, not, not because of pressure, but for the p women and the people on the street fight for a new system. And also in Manila, for example, I mean, you live in a very, sp I visit Manila, uh, and you li live in a very special country. So you have a big LGBTQ community, for example, that are, are they really free? No. So, and is it uh, dangerous to be there as a uh, homosexual guy? Yes. So, and I think we have to we have to engage there. We have to be there, and we have to organize youth exchange between the, that young people from Manila come to Berlin, uh, come to Austria, and we come to Manila. That we understand, that see uh, that all our people, our young generation, see what what uh, miracle is it to see to live in a freedom world, and to fight for people. They are not that far yet, and for the other people, see okay how how freedom smells, and and to, to support our liberal partner. I'm a I'm a member of the liberal party. We have a liberal party membership in with our liberal party friends in in, in Manila. So uh, our Nauman Foundation is there, for example. So I'm, uh, so and it's very very important. And so there is a huge community. They want to have a freedom way and and they have to engage and we have to empower them we have to empower them to engage that they that these young people can engage in politics and make the change by their own i think this is an answer thank you so much um, i just want to say I, i worked with the friedrich naumann foundation back in manila and i'm really proud of what they do oh thank you very much <laughs> okay. um, uh, Mr. Frank, uh, thank you for your uh, perspective. Uh, uh, do you think that any uh, serious effort is going on for to end the war uh, between U.S., uh, Russia, and Ukraine? And if th if there is something, uh, is Germany is seriously engaged in those efforts? Yes, I think there is a solution for the end of the war, a very simple one. Russia has to stop their army, the navy, and everything. Because if Russia stop uh, the war, then we have freedom. If the Ukraine stop the war, we have no Ukraine. And this is, and, and this is the truth. So there is no way right now uh, for the chance of um, negotiation. There. Not because we want not to do it. The, the embassy of Russia is, <laughs> I think, 20, 30 meters from my office. It's, 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 I, opened the, I opened my window and 40 meters uh, in the opposite of the street is the Russian embassy. So uh, we won't have a diplomatic uh, solution. But there is one guy in the world, he's not interested in diplomatic. A way of solution. This is Vladimir Putin, and this and this is and this is crazy. We have after Crimea, for example, they they get they they, they took the Crimea against every rights of the world, took Crimea, and we instead of uh, fighting against this, we have a little bit sanction. So we, have, we we did it in a diplomatic way. We we tried to have diplomatic solutions. Look at um, Georgia, when Russia took parts of Georgia. Um, what was the answer of Europe, and especially in Germany? We enlarged the G7 to, to G8. We took Russia in our arms to find, but, but because we thought we have to, we cannot have war in Europe. We want to have diplomatic. So G7 to G8. We bring it, we have the NATO Russland Grundakte. Do not want the, the, the English word for Then we have the, the situation after, after the annexation of Crimea. And a lot of diplomatic. Then we, until the, until the beginning of the hot war on February the, the 24th, already 14,000 soldiers died in East Ukraine. Until that, and what did the Western community did? Diplomatic way. We 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 wasn't a diplomat. We, we we thought we can solve it um, of a diplomatic way. And the only guy he's not interested in diplomatic is Putin. 
And he said, okay, he, I'm not interested in diplomatic and I, I bring the troops, all my troops to, to, to Ukraine. People like we, young women, young men like we, like we, go to office and then the rockets come down. In a situation like we, sitting here, and can, you could imagine 10, now in four minutes, 10 rockets come there and destroy everything. So this, is the, this, is, this, is, this is the reality in Europe. Because, not, not because we want to have no diplomatic, because Russia wants to diplomatic, and that is the only way we can do it. The only uh, chance to stop this war is when Vladimir Putin stop his troops. One more question or comment? And of, and, and of course, we are very strong with our troops, of course. We can destroy everything, but uh, let's take a little bit of time. No, one more question. Yes, one more, and then I have to leave, because I have to, uh, I have to vote. vote. I have to vote not later than 45. Yes, um, you mentioned earlier about um, the, um, how it, the, the fall of the wall was a result of the people wanting freedom, wanting, you know, it's, it's a, we have to give credit to the desire of the people to uh, bring about this change. I was just wondering because um, recently I've seen in the news that um, when Russia, when uh, the government wanted uh, more um, men to join the, the, um, the military or to, to, be, to become soldiers in, in the war, a lot of the uh, young Russian um, um, men and, and um, individuals, um, they decided not to join. They, they, they kind of like, it's not really a protest, but it's somehow it seemed like their own choice of, of saying that I would rather get out of Russia than to join this war. Do you think this, um, this is um, similar to um, the people saying that we don't want this war and, and, and especially coming from the Russian um, people themselves and what does this um, imply to or how, how will this impact the Russian um, strategy at the moment in, in terms of the war? Yes, um, the two perspectives. The first one is um, in Russia, um, to stand on the street in Russia and say, I'm against the war, you go in, you go in prison in five minutes. So, so you cannot say, um, how is the, how's the feeling in society? Because a lot of people are against this war, but they do not uh, go to the street because they want not to be in the prison <laughs> or killed. So, and that's that's the re that's the reason. Um, yes, of course, we see a uh, change uh, in the mindset of some people on the on the floor, under some people on the floor, um, that they do not want to fight. Um, uh, the refugees from Russia is a huge amount now. It's not only in Germany, also in Finland and a lot of uh, uh, Tashkent, Kazakhstan, and so on. But um, that there are a lot of people. They're not against the system. They only they, they only want not to fight. So and that's we see if, we know from our intelligence service that uh, there are a lot of people uh, inside the refugees. They are they are they, they, they belongs to the system to the to the to the system. Uh, they, but they do want not to fight. And the and the change is a very realistic way Russia do, uh, do it right now, because they stopped the recruiting process in Moscow and Saint Petersburg. In the big cities, in the big liberal cities, uh, liberal, no, it's not, no, nothing is liberal in Russia, but you know what I mean. And uh, um, and and uh, concentrate uh, the uh, the recruiting process in the Muslim uh, areas, and so and the poorest. This is the, the poorest uh, men's Russia have to fight there. And now we see um, they fight there because they get pretty much money for this. And normally they get three hundred. Two hundred fifty euro per month, and now they get as a soldier three thousand or four thousand euro per month. So it is, of course, they said, okay, I have to go, otherwise I would shut down. Okay, then when I go, I have to, I, I bring money with. So they earn in in a half year, they earn more money than they get in twenty years if they work at home. And now they on the now they're on the front. Is that front of English? On the, the front. On the front, yeah. Yes, they're on the front. The front. Um, 
and we and we listen to their cell phone. We we we, call, we, we our intelligence service. We 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 know the phone calls at home. So and I can and I can and can say to you that there is uh, no one from these soldiers that is happy about this. They 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 call at home and say, stay at home. Please do me only one favor. Tell everybody that he has not to come here because we died. Uh, we, we, we died a hundred times every day. Uh, we have no weapons. We have nothing there. Uh, they, uh, the government uh, uh, did nothing for protect their own soldiers. And so, uh, because the Ukraine fight with the more modern weapon system in the, in the world exists, uh, this is a this is a cyber war right now. Um, we shut down a lot of things. And on the other, and, 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 and Russia go to the war like World War II. And so, and, and so it, now we, we see, for example, one thing uh, uh, is that, um, that the people, um, the Ukrainians took the cell phones from the, uh, from the uniform, uh, from, the, from, from, from the uniform, from the, from the dead soldiers from Russia, and there is a software from, uh, some, and, they can, and they can unlock the, the, the cell phone and send a picture from the death, from, from death uh, soldier to all contacts on WhatsApp, for example, or, uh, and say, this is the result of your, of your dictatorship, Vladimir Putin, and so And so the, because the, the, the message uh, comes to the, to, the, to the country. So that, that changed something. But in the, in the nearest, um, Environment of Vladimir Putin, there is nobody who want to stop this. This so this is a completely um, this is yes, this this is a completely another cloud uh, they live. Uh, so there is nobody who want to stop them, and the people um, are not um, that um, that engaged right now because it's very 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 uh, dangerous uh, to engage. So and yes, this is. It. Unfortunately, I have to do it. on that occasion, let's express our sincere gratitude. <laughs>